As we all know, hundreds or perhaps thousands of years in the future, all humankind's or anybody else's wars for that matter, will happen in space. The reason for that is that it's just so much cooler than doing it on land or on sea. So anyway, what would a space battleship look like? How would it move? What would it do? How would it fight? This is what I think of all those problems. Let's get rid of this display stand here. So, first of all, how it would move. Uh, and first of that is, how would it get away from a planet or into another star system? The answer for that is warp drive. It's, that's cheating I suppose because we actually haven't invented anything like that yet. But this big ring around the outside, this big oval here, that's the warp drive. It's able to bend space and time and, and, uh, and kind of separate the ship into a bubble and move it to a new location and kind of sidestepping the faster than light laws because it's really dragging the destination closer to it and, pu and basically shortening the distance so it can traverse it easier. That's the warp drive. The warp drive is very fragile and so you would want to disconnect that during times of combat and leave it behind in a secure location because hey it's your ticket home you don't want to be stranded in the middle of nowhere without your warp drive. Uh, it's got a cool little building design here where you kind of build bend bricks talking about the Legos now not the space station and uh, I didn't come up with that technique you can read the description of the video to find the guy who I got it from. He's much more talented than, than I am, so that's the end of that. That didn't break. I threw it and it didn't break. That's tough. Anyway, for when it's not moving in warp, it would need engines. And those are these engines. They're, they're fusion engines, meaning that hydrogen is pumped into the chamber, it's mixed around until they collide, until the individual atoms collide into helium atoms. And that creates tremendous heat and pressure, propelling the helium out at very high speeds, creating very efficient thrust with very little fuel. The only downside is you need a lot of electricity, a ton of electricity, but we'll get to that. It's also got two more in the front. That may seem weird. Why, why I have two engines in the front? Wouldn't that, isn't that kind of counterintuitive to these ones in the back? Well, yes it is. Uh, but the point of that is that there's no air in space, and so if, if these engines get you moving forwards, you never stop. You never, ever, ever, ever stop. And so, these are basically the brakes, because it'll never stop. If you didn't have these, if these weren't there, then it would have to spin around backwards every time you needed to slow down, and then the gunners manning the guns would be like, Hey, what the heck you doing, pilot? Why are you, why are you spinning us around? Oh, we can't shoot anybody like that. And, uh, and nobody wants the gunners complaining. So anyway, that's what these are for. This spends most of its time in space. If it ever enters atmosphere, it has to hover because it has no wings. And so it's got these, little, these four little engines in front and these four little engines in the back to help it hover. Spend, spends tons of fuel, however, and so not recommended that you go into atmosphere on a regular basis with this kind of ship. As for armament, it's got these six guns on each side as you can see, kind of all paired into one turret. There's two guns so that if one breaks the turret can still function, even if worse. Six more guns on the other side, that's a total of twelve guns. And uh, four torpedo tubes on the front, up on top here, and two in the back, in case anybody's ever sneaking up behind it. These things are escape pods, so if anything happens to these, well, you know what these do. You've seen Star Wars, you know what these do. They pop off when the ship's doomed, and then another ship can collect, can collect them, or they fall to a planet, and the crew who's all in these things, they can survive until help comes. Escape pods, yeah. And as for picking up the escape pods, it's got this landing bay in the back that can open up. Uh, it's got a shuttle in here right now. This thing is what you would usually use to go down to a planet. It's got wings and everything, but I made it very small, so there's not much detail on it, so use your imagination here. It's a fairly large shuttle. Anyway, uh, that's beside the point. Uh, the point is, if another the frigate in the fleet breaks, it can collect all the escape pods in here. Problem solved. 
can also capture enemy ships in there or store fall, small sm fighter squadron in there. And But it also needs to dock with larger ships, like a mothership, it needs to refuel, needs to land and uh, unload and offload cr crew and whatnot. And so it's got this right here, this little docking ring, that kind of extends out like that when you want to dock using a little switch I built in right there. So that's cool stuff. These two little circles are power couplings, and so it can get recharged and whatnot. And um, it's, I also made a little bit of an interior. You can just pull the roof off like this. And you can see two reactors in here. They are fusion tokamak reactors. They provide all the electricity the ship needs. The, premise, the whole premise of a tokamak is that got a whole bunch of hydrogen swirling around in a little magnetic tank until all the hydrogen collides into helium and that creates a whole bunch of heat which spins steam turbines similar to well what we've used for hundreds of years reactors yeah you can look look up tokamak online it's I don't know how to spell it never mind and that's how the docking mechanism works it's got a little cam in there in real life, it would probably be some kind of a rack and pinion system, but that's just how I got it to work with Lego. And that is all. And for those of you who are wondering what those white things were running around in the background, in the background, well, those are chickens. They are the most common bird in the world and quite delicious, so they're nothing to stare at.